Welcome and congratulations on making it to Rigging Isn't Scary Level 2. By the end of this section, you will be well on your way to conquering the Rigging Valley of the Suck. In this section, we'll make an even better rig than in Level 1. It will feature automated corrective bones in the wrist and shoulder, a better hips control, and a foot setup. These are essential rig mechanisms that you definitely need in your toolkit. As a final challenge, you will also build a simple face rig with a little help from me. All of this will be surprisingly easy, because instead of just adding lots and lots of complexity, which may just confuse you, we'll focus on deepening your fundamental rigging knowledge. Mastering the fundamentals is key. This is something I noticed after I began making rigging tutorials. Teaching forced me to learn the fundamentals really well. But the weird part is that also made me better at understanding advanced techniques. That's why I focus on teaching foundational skills, especially at the novice level. And therefore, in this video and the next one, we'll set up a similar rig to level 1, but along the way, we'll stop and focus on little important details that many people miss. We'll talk about precise bone alignment, bone placement based on anatomy, and bone roll. These are vital things that you need to know. There will be nothing difficult, just watch the videos and try to absorb the information. And based on that, we'll build the cool mechanisms that I mentioned earlier. Get the start file from the downloads and we'll get right into it. Since we are focusing on good practices and fundamentals, I'm going to check my model. This is a habit of mine and it has to become a habit for you as well. So the model is standing on top of the grid. If I switch to front view, I can see the face of the character. That is exactly what I want. The character is exactly in the middle and she is normal human size. If you need to tweak something for a character, do it before you start rigging. And then if location, rotation and scale are not applied, select all objects, control A, all transforms. Then if the 3D cursor is not in the middle, press Shift S, cursor to world origin, then Shift A and create your initial armature bone. Do not move the armature in object mode while creating the rig. This way its origin will stay exactly in the center of the scene. Then under armature, viewport display, enable in front. Now we can start rigging, but before we do, please allow me to make one small change to my settings. I'll go to Edit Preferences, Key Map, and enable Tab for Pi Menu. When I have it enabled, I can just press Tab in the viewport and go to Edit Mode, Pose Mode, or Object Mode really quickly. And for meshes, of course, when I press Tab, I'll get Edit Mode, Object Mode, Weight Paint Mode, Sculpt Mode, and so on. This makes going between the different modes much more convenient. You don't have to do it, just keep in mind that that is how I'll be switching modes. I will always let you know that I'm switching the mode and you can also look in the upper left corner and you'll see which mode I'm in. I'll go to edit mode and I'll start building the spine. In level one, I told you to go to side view and adjust this initial bone this way. That is because we created the armature in the center of the world, so the default bone is in the center, and if I only move it in the side view, it will stay that way. This makes adjusting this bone for the spine very easy. But that is not the only way to do it. In perspective, you can press G then Z to only move the bone up and down. You can also use the move gizmo. To extrude a new bone from here, I can select the tail of the bone, press E, then Z, so that the extrusion is straight up, and once more. My favorite way is still to go to side view, but keep in mind that there are different ways to be precise, and you should be using all of them. Now let's say that you offset these bones a little bit on the x-axis by accident. An easy way to fix it is to select all bones, press Shift S, cursor to world origins, so that the 3 cursor is exactly in the middle. Set your pivot point to 3D cursor, orientation to global, press S, then X, then 0 on the numpad. 
These are just a handful of precision techniques. Precision is quite important in rigging, so you'll learn more of these later in the course. Now that you can be precise, let's see how these bones need to be positioned exactly inside the body of the character. I took images of our character and overlaid a skeleton over them. This helps me determine the most important points on the spine. These are the bottom of the pelvis, the start of the actual spine, the start of the rib cage, and the end of the rib cage, which gives me a basic spine like this. From the side view, if I just follow my anatomical reference, I'll get a curve that looks something like this. An important point is that anatomy should be just a starting point, but we don't have to follow it blindly. If you align the spine bones like this from the side view, the deformations you get will likely not be ideal. Blender bones do not just simulate real bones. They need to simulate the bones as well as musculature and other tissue on the body. So as a rule of thumb, try to keep your blender bones close to the center of the volume of the body. So from the side view, instead of this, we'll get something that looks more like this. Let's implement it. Now I want to align the bones from the front view and let me switch my pivot point back to bounding box center so that I can use my gizmo. Understanding the pivot points and the orientations is another key to being very precise and you will learn all about them during the course. I'll select this connection of bones and move it down a little bit to establish my pelvis and then I'll move this one down as well to establish the middle of the spine and this will be my chest bone. From the side view, as I said, I want to keep these bones close to the middle of the body. The chest has some flexibility, so you can also split it into two bones, but we'll keep it to one in this example. Now I want to create bones for the neck and head, and let's look at our reference again. The pivot of rotation of the neck should be around here, which we already established, and the pivot of rotation of the head will be around here, which is just below the ear. So I'm going to extrude another bone and place it just below the ear. And then I'll extrude another bone straight up to the top of the head. Next, we want to create the clavicle or the shoulder bone. In my reference, I'm going to mark the clavicle bone with dots and connect them. So this should be our clavicle bone, right? Not quite. Again, let's follow the rule that a bone needs to be in the center of the mass that it's going to control. And what the shoulder bone controls is really the clavicle, the traps, muscles, and even the scapula at the back. So in Blender, I'm going to create a new bone, go to front view, rotate it about 90 degrees, scale it down, align it roughly with the clavicle from the front view, and from this side view, I'm going to push it in the middle of the body so that it can control the clavicle, the traps, and the scapula. Next, we have the arm, and this is another important point. The base of the arm is this ball socket joint below the clavicle. There is a tendency to place this joint not deep enough, so somewhere around here. If we follow the reference, it should be here, and the elbow and wrist are much easier to align just based on our model, so we'll not focus on them too much. So, let's grab the spine, go to front view, press Shift D and rotate it. And again, this created this tilt of the bone. This is the bone roll, which we can control with Control R. I'm going to talk more about it in a second, but now let's place this part of the bone deep into the body, just like we saw on the reference. And for the elbow, I'm going to enable my material preview. And I can see some faults here, which are exactly the elbow. So I'll place my bone here and then press E to extrude another bone and extrude it all the way to the wrist, which again is obvious based on this model and texture detail. And then I'll extrude another bone for the hand. Now let's go to the top view and move this arm on the y-axis and align it with the actual model. And again, I'll try to keep these bones in the middle of the geometry. In level one, I already mentioned to make the elbow slightly bent like this. 
a very slight angle is fine, just don't make it straight or bending the opposite direction. This mostly has to do with the IK setup. We'll only do a basic IK arm setup in this chapter, but it is an important best practice, so please keep it in mind. Slight bend from the top view and from the front view, keep the bones as straight as possible. The legs are similar to the arm, you have a ball socket joint at the hips, it will be your base guide for placing the leg bone, and the knees and ankles should be much easier to determine based on the model itself. Let's create a new bone, I'll move the bone and align it roughly with the leg, and then from the front view I'll rotate it 180 degrees. Again this is because the thick part of the bone is the pivot point, so I want to align it with the anatomical point that we just figured out. Something else that I want to point out is that if I create a new bone and rotate it 180 degrees from the side view, that will have a slightly different effect than rotating it from the front view. We'll get into that in a second when we talk about bone roll. So I'll delete this bone and place this joint in the knee area, which should be fairly obvious, and then extrude another bone and place it at the ankle, one more bone all the way to the toes and one more bone for the toes themselves. Again, I'm giving a slight angle to the knee and from the front view, I want to keep these bones as straight as possible. I'm not just aligning them with the mesh, I want them to be fairly straight from the front view. By the way, another guideline that I use for placing this point is to imagine the side of the hips bone and place this joint right in the middle of the hips area. Next we'll be talking about bone roll. This has to do with the orientation and rotation of your bones. I know it is not a sexy subject, but you will be so glad that you learned about it because not understanding bone roll causes a lot of rigging issues. We already have some experience with selecting bones and pressing Ctrl R and rolling the bone. But what is this for? What's the point? On the armature tab, enable axis. And that will show the axis or the orientations of the bones. Now press Ctrl R and notice how the axis rotate or roll along with the bone. To follow along with me, roll these bones so that the Z axis is pointing straight away from the arm. Go to pose mode, switch to local orientation mode, and choose the rotation gizmo. The lower arm does not have a lot of freedom of rotation, it only rotates on one axis. So with this bone roll, I can just rotate on the X axis, and that will rotate exactly as the lower arm is supposed to rotate. I'll go back to edit mode, select all of these bones and roll them so that they're pointing at an angle Go back to pose mode, and now rotating this lower arm on the x-axis does something that is not realistic. And you may be thinking, well, I could just go to this kind of view and rotate the arm. And yes, you could, but that is not ideal. It can cause problems with rig mechanisms, but most importantly, your animator is going to hate you. Because animators use animation curves. When the bone roll is properly aligned, then the animator will be able to control this lower arm just using the curve for the x-axis. But with this kind of messy bone roll, they'll have to think about multiple axes. Animation work is already difficult and this makes it into a nightmare. So go back to edit mode, select all of these bones and roll them so that the z-axis points straight away from the arm. And you can do the same for the shoulder bone in case it is not aligned well. The spine is mostly fine, but if you remember, I showed you how to fix the spine in case you moved it on the x-axis. And that actually tweaked the bone roll slightly. If I select one of the spine bones and look under end panel, item, you'll see the actual value of the roll and it is not exactly zero. So I can set it to zero right here or I can select all bones and press Alt R and that clears the roll or in other words, sets the roll to zero. 
So now the spine bones are perfectly aligned. In case your leg bones need to be adjusted, select them and press Ctrl R. And to follow along with me, align the axis exactly as you see here, with this Z pointing away from the knee, the hips and so on. I just want to point out that the Z axis pointing forward like this is not the ultimate correct answer. For example, if I roll the bone so that the X points forward, that is also okay. I'm going to undo. A bit earlier in the video, I said that rotating a bone from the front view has a slightly different effect from rotating the same bone from the side view or another view. Now that you understand bone roll and axis, let's see what the difference is. I'll create a new armature for this demonstration. Enable in front, go to edit mode, select the default bone, press R and rotate it about 180 degrees. And I'll place it here. Then I'll create a new bone, which will have the exact same orientation as the default bone. Then go to side view and rotate it about 180 degrees. And I'll place it next to my default bone. Visually, these bones look exactly the same, but if we enable axis, you'll see that the x-axis and the z-axis are pointing in the exact opposite direction. If I create a new bone, you'll see how the bone axis rotates with it. And that is why we get a different roll depending on the view that we rotate the bone in. I'm just mentioning this because from this level onward, you really have to pay attention to bone roll. Just looking at the bone and thinking, I guess it looks okay, is not enough anymore. So always keep in mind bone axis and bone roll because in pose mode, they define the rotation of the bone. Here, for example, if I rotate this bone on positive X, it swings in this direction, whereas this bone with the opposite axis, if I give it a positive X value, it rotates in the opposite direction. So bone roll is important to define the exact rotation of a bone. Bone roll is an even deeper rabbit hole that we are going to explore in level three, intermediate rigging. In pose mode, it also has to do with this rotation mode, for now, just try to keep the axis nice and clean so that rotating on just one axis produces a natural result. Such as bending the lower arm, or if we look at the upper arm, Z rotation is up and down and X rotation is forward and back. So that is it, keep the axis clean. Great, I think this part wasn't too difficult. So let's go straight into the next one in which we'll add fingers. And the fingers will help us understand bone roll on an even deeper level.